Seeking clues that could help predict the next terrifying eruption, we revisit the disaster of Mount St. Helens in Washington State. It's 1980. Scientists fear that the volcano is going to blow, not only because of its changing gas emissions, but more importantly, because the ground is changing shape. And as every volcanologist knows, only vast underground volcanic pressures can move a mountain. Before an eruption, molten rock forces upward under almost unimaginable pressure to fill the underground magma chambers. Cracks may open up, land may subside, or the Earth's surface may actually rise up in a clearly visible bulge. It can change the very shape of the volcano. And this ground deformation gives volcanologists another important clue in their quest to predict a coming eruption. Ground deformation becomes the most important clue of all on the Mount St. Helens volcano in the spring of 1980. It's caused by the intrusion of magma underground and gives scientists a vital warning about the ever-growing danger of an eruption. Volcanologist Don Swanson is there as the volcano starts to stir in the spring of 1980. It was an exciting time for me and for all of the others there, but I don't think we ever anticipated or came close to anticipating the magnitude of what was going to happen. The north flank of the volcano develops an unsightly half-mile wide bulge, a deformation process for which Swanson has a very human analogy. Kind of like a stomach rumbling. You sometimes have a great swelling. And of course, we all know about gas coming out of the stomach. So I think there, there are these um, very earthy um, metaphors that you can use, but you're listening for a volcano's burp. Despite all the warning signs, nobody can say for certain if and when the volcano might erupt. Soon, the bulge in the mountainside is growing at an incredible rate. As much as five feet in a single day, as molten rock moves up inside the volcano. Cracks open up in the surrounding slopes as the bulge pushes more than 450 feet outward from the mountainside. Scientists from the United States Geological Survey monitor the movements with electronic tilt meters which radio their measurements to the scientists' laboratory. These are signs that the scientists cannot afford to ignore. The area is evacuated. On the morning of May 17th, Don Swanson is the last person to fly to the very top of the mountain. He asks his helicopter pilot to land for a closer look at the way the volcano is changing. We walked over and took a look into the crater that had formed at the summit of the volcano, and we had no idea that the next morning the volcano was going to fall apart. 8.32 a.m., May 18th, 1980. A massive landslide rips the mountain apart as 23 square miles of rock slide down the north flank of Mount St. Helens. The landslide releases the weight pressure on the magma beneath, popping the cork from the champagne bottle and causing the most destructive eruption in the history of the United States. It pumps about 520 million tons of ash up to 12 miles in the air and turns day into night for people as far as 250 miles away. Pile that much ash up on a football field and it will reach up to 150 miles into the sky. That morning, Don Swanson is once again in a helicopter with a bird's eye view of the terrifying natural wonder unfolding below. Flying around the volcano is really an awesome experience. We're looking out, we can see that this is an exceptionally energetic eruption column, and all of us are, are, are overwhelmed by what we see. Gene Hutchinson is also overwhelmed that day by the sights and sounds of Mount St. Helens erupting. He revisits the national park surrounding the volcano. We could see this huge plume going up, I'm told, 65, 70,000 feet in the air. There was actually people that were burned to death due to this high temperature. 
Once the mountain erupts, a huge volcanic flood, known as a lahar, rushes down this valley. All the timber in the area is blown down for miles around. Within two weeks, some of the ash drifts around the globe. 57 people die in the eruption that causes more than $1 billion in damages. And yet, in terms of the accuracy of scientific prediction, the Mount St. Helens disaster is considered a relative success. Scientists using ground deformation as a major clue give enough warnings for thousands of people to safely evacuate the area.